Uh, if I could, I'd like to take a moment to, to pass on from the LSU football family our, our condolences to uh, the, the Baglio family. As many of you know, we lost uh, Coach Baglio to a tragic uh, uh, accident uh, over the weekend. Um, I didn't get a chance to work with, with Coach, um, but can tell you that um, everyone that I have uh, come in contact with that has worked with him knew him as um, an incredibly passionate uh, LSU supporter, fan, um, well-connected, certainly in the community, amongst coaches, high schools, high school coaches throughout the state. Um, they, they all are uh, certainly affected by his loss. Um, our hearts go out to his family, and um, we lost a great one. So I just wanted to uh, pass that on from the LSU football family. Um, Let's talk about the game, uh, the Arkansas game in particular. Um, you know, I think what I'm most proud of our team is that they had to go on the road and match the intensity uh, and the physicality of an opponent that was coming off a bye week, and I thought we did that uh, and did that very well. And that was really the mantra all week was that we had to come off of playing an emotional game, overtime game against uh, Ole Miss, uh, and then really regroup – uh, and then go on the road uh, in a, a hostile environment, if you will, and, and, and then play with an extra heartbeat, play physical, uh, play to the echo of the whistle. Uh, it was a team that, that uh, had showed itself on film as one that um, played that way, and, and then we had to match it, and I thought we did a great job uh, from that standpoint. Um, you know, certainly we got off to a really good start uh, offensively, um, you know, defensively, uh, I thought we tackled extremely well. Uh, we were physical. Uh, we got timely turnovers. And, you know, individual players certainly um, need to be uh, talked about as well. Damian Ramos was the SEC Special Teams Player of the Week. Emory Jones was the SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. Uh, certainly Caden Durham, uh, 100 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Uh, Nuss again, uh, 23 of 34, no interceptions, no turnovers, and of course um, can't finish uh, a defensive performance without Whit Weeks being all over the field, 10 tackles, one sack, one interception, uh, and leads the SEC in tackles. So some great individual performances, but as a team, uh, offense, defense, and special teams, uh, I think what we did well was we prepared very well, uh, and then we took that preparation um, relative to how we thought about um, uh, the way we needed to play. And, and that was with a physicality, uh, with extra effort, and being really aggressive. The first time we played on the road, uh, I thought we were reactive uh, against South Carolina. We waited for things to happen. And as you know, we got down 17 points. This game, we didn't wait around, and that's how we need to play this coming weekend against an outstanding A&M team, uh, a team that uh, we'll get a chance to play on uh, national television, um, you know, a 4-0 team, and uh, going to co College Station is, is certainly a, a challenge. Uh, Mike Elko is doing a great job with this football team uh, in his first year. They've won six straights, very similar to, to what uh, our team has been doing. Uh, we lose the opener. They've they lost their opener and have played better and better each and every week. Um, they're running the ball very well, over 200 yards rushing a game. Uh, but they're very balanced on offense. They throw it um, very well. Uh, I think Connor Wegman is a, is, is a really good quarterback. Um, he is deceptive in terms of his speed. Uh, and uh, he's got very good weapons. You know, Moss, at the running back position, uh, obviously from Walker, Louisiana, leads the SEC in rushing per game at 96 yards. And then he's got uh, a, a bevy of receivers led by uh, Thomas, who's a six foot six uh, wide receiver. Um, I think he's got a very good offensive line. Um, Basantis is, uh, is, is really a physical presence inside for them. I think they're athletic. They work well together. Um, 
and, and it just I think it's a really well conceived offense, very balanced and defensively. You know, obviously, you know, uh, with with Coach Elko's background, coaching defense, you know, this is going to be a fundamentally sound defense. Uh, they take the football away. I think they're second in the SEC in takeaways. Um, you know, they've got a, an outstanding front. Uh, it, it reminds me in, in a lot of ways of, of Ole Miss's front, uh, big, physical. Uh, they've got a transfer, a couple of transfers that really changed the complexion. Uh, Nick Scorton from Purdue is, is, a, is a big, physical uh, defensive end. Uh, you still have Stewart, who's been there, athletic. Um, just a really well-conceived uh, group. Um, linebackers are athletic, can run. Uh, it's led by uh, York as the middle linebacker, smart, savvy guy. He's the green dot, does a really good job back there. Um, you know, we looked at Will Lee in the portal, transfer from Kansas State, uh, physical, uh, really smart corner. Um, again, a really good, well-constructed, fundamentally sound defense that is going to make you earn everything. Don't give up big plays. Uh, they play the, the way you would expect them to play. So um, great challenge going to uh, College Station. Uh, we'll have to, again, um, you know, play our very best. But, um, you know, there's a lot to play for, so we're excited about the challenge. So that will open up to questions. Hey, Coach, what did you take away from your first year when you went to College Station, that atmosphere, how unique it is, how challenging it is to, to play in? Yeah, I, th I think we, we learned a lot about, you know, there are different venues in this league, and they're all difficult, but I, th I think when you go to A&M, uh, a lot like coming to Tiger Stadium, you know, they kind of separate themselves, right? There's a few that are separating themselves from the others, no, no knock on, you know, uh, South Carolina, no knock on Arkansas. Those are tough environments. But, you know, when you start to separate with maybe Neyland Stadium, going to Alabama, you know, certainly here with A&M and Tiger Stadium, these are, these are different. And, and you have to prepare uh, and understand that in that environment, you have to block out those distractions because if you don't, they will affect – uh, the outcome of, of certain games. Coach, uh, heading into a game like this, now with the 12 team uh, college football playoff, does that affect the way you guys uh, look at a game like this compared to, say, if you had this game in the scenario last season with just a 14 playoff? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think our preparation uh, will be uh, certainly uh, the same. I, I, look, I think. The one thing that is so important to point out, and, and I think you could just look at the teams around college football, everybody's looking for how can they be consistent? How can they be the same team week in and week out? And for us, it's about our preparation and our process and how we can be consistent. It's the consistent application of what we do and how we do it and then turning that over to performance. So whether it's a 14 playoff, 18, 12 team, that really, that really doesn't come into the equation as much as how we prepare consistently. That will be the focus. Are we going to prepare as well as we did last week? And if we do, then we will perform equal to that. And that's really what we'll focus on this week. Brian, kind of a random question from the last game. Blake drew up that blitz on third down early with like the, I don't even know how to fully describe it, that funky sort of like eye formation blitz thing. Like just what did you make of that and why was that sort of successful? It seems so exotic. Well, again, it's, it's you know, the, the little nuances of pressures in those situations are to make it difficult for protection schemes and you know, th those little uh, tweaks, if you will, to our pressures uh, are things that, that Blake has carried with him and have been effective. Um, you know, we wanted something that gave us um, the opportunity to uh, attack their protections, but also have a runner in a position that could um, really spy the quarterback. And, and so that was something that he had um, – had used in, in certain situations before, 
and felt like this was the week against that particular quarterback uh, would be effective. Brian, we've seen the grit and resilience that your team has displayed. At the beginning of the year, you talked about the maturity uh, you know, in year three here. The pendulum's going to swing from everybody doubting you to everybody praising you and calling you a college playoff contender. How do you handle that messaging, and does that maturity kind of kick in right now in times like this? Yeah, I think there's been enough players that have been down this road before. Um, and, you know, we had to go to Alabama and, and, and win a football game, and, and we didn't come up. We came up short last year. So they understand that, that this is a week-to-week -week thing, right? You know, you, you win a game and, and everybody thinks you're great. You lose a game and everybody thinks you're a bum. So um, our guys stay in the present. They understand how important it is to stay grounded and focused on really – what can they control? And I think they've gotten to that point where whatever the narratives are and, and whatever people are saying, we've already kind of covered it with them in that what's really important is what you can control. And what people write about you, what they say about you, you can't control it. Control the controllables. And for us, as, as I mentioned to Koki, it's about our preparation. If we do a really good job with our preparation, then, um, then good things usually happen. Right over here, Coach. Uh, you mentioned your respect for College Station and that environment. In a game where maybe the margin of error is very thin, could you talk about your team's ability just to win in different ways and not being pigeonholed into saying, we have to play this way in order to win a game? Well, yeah, I mean, I think what's important for us, you know, from an offensive standpoint, and I've said this before, is that we want to be equally efficient, whether it's running or throwing, um, as an offense. And then from a defensive standpoint, if you're one-dimensional, in other words, if you can't stop the run but you're great against the pass, you, you really can never be consistent at anything. So as I mentioned earlier, trying to find that consistency is really about balance and being good in both phases, running the ball, throwing the ball, stopping the run, being efficient in, in terms of pass defense. Those are areas that we've worked hard. So winning for me is about how you can get to a level of consistency at all phases. And we're getting better at that. We had some glaring weaknesses in one of those phases or another and we're shoring those up as we go through the season. On your left over here. Yeah. Um, question about Nuss Meyer's completion percentage. You just in the SEC games, notice it's a little bit below 60%. And I'm not, as, I'm not saying that's bad. For context, actually, it looks like Dart and uh, Cook and Tennessee's quarterback um, also are below 60. And then, of course, um, Beck and uh, Milrow both have more than one interception per game in their SEC starts. Just so in, in that context, how do you feel like he's doing? And, um, and do you think it speaks to any kind of trend about quarterback play in the league this year relative to last year where we had Jaden Daniels, you know, with such a high percentage and winning the Heisman? Well, uh, you know, I think, you know, Daniels in, in terms of his efficiency and completion percentage, um, was a, a, a product of how well he was throwing the football. I mean, he was um, elite and certainly won the Heisman. Uh, our passing game, and, and you can you know, obviously look at what we do, we're not a team that, that takes um, some of the, the bubble screens and, and the quick uh, entry pass throws um, as part of what we do on a consistent basis. Um, I've had some offensive structures that, you know, we would throw at 70% because we were throwing, you know, easy throws out on the perimeter. Uh, we don't have a lot of those. We'll have some free access throws on the perimeter, which we had the other night, but we're, we're through passing game progression, which is some more complex throws. So our percentage is going to be a little bit lower. We're not going to be in the 70 to 75 percentile. We're going to be probably in the 60s. So it's really what our choice is relative to the kind of passing game that we're running with, with, with Garrett. 
Uh, we, we were talking with Witt weeks after the game, and he just heaped a ton of praise on Blake Baker and kind of his development of the linebacker room uh, in really just one off season. Can you speak to just his ability to relate to those players in that room? And because I mean, whether it's Penn or Weeks, and we saw Devon Keys get in there and, and make some plays. Just just talk about maybe the evolution of that linebacker room this year. Yeah, I mean uh, Xavier Atkin obviously playing well for us, and and um, you know that's. I think we had in total, uh, I think we played 11 true freshmen um, on the road. Um, and, and in some instances, that's you know, scary. And, and, and when you look at it, that's exciting you know, when you're winning on the road uh, like that. I think as it relates to Blake and, and the linebacker room, uh, you know, clearly there's a connection there through uh, belief, trust, uh, and, you know, the ability to, uh, you know, build relationships with the players that um, kind of fosters that, right, you know, and relationships require time, and Blake puts in the time with him. He's around the building all the time. He's, um, you know, during the summer, he's around here. I mean, he takes the time uh, to be around the players, and that's the only way you can build relationships with them. You can't just show up on Saturday and go, hey, I'd like you to do these things for me. So I think it's the time that he puts in, uh, and because of that, um, he, he has built really good relationships and, and a lot of it on trust. The job that Caden's doing, uh, looks like he's probably not 100%, but just to have a freshman back that's able to kind of you know, fight through all that, how unique is that? Uh, you know, I, I'm really impressed with uh, a freshman running back that is not playing at 100%, but in there playing with grit and toughness and um, just the kind of resolve that he has. Um, a lot of guys would not be in uh, in the game. I mean, he's playing, he's playing at about 80 85%, but... He's got great vision. He's got toughness. Uh, keeps his legs moving, um, and you know, again, it's injuries are hard to deal with at, at any position. But when you're a running back and and you've got an injury and you're still fighting through it, I think it says a lot about the young man. And I'm really proud of him. Just sort of build off that question. Uh, was there an aspect to the, I guess, the timing of the running game that you thought was uh, a, a place where you guys can build on in future weeks? Was, did, do you think the timing improved at all in terms of the running backs, the offensive line, all that stuff? Well, I, I think I, maybe I did or maybe I didn't. I, I felt like what was better was the cohesiveness of the tight ends, the wide receivers, uh, the quarterback getting us in the right plays, um, back seeing it better. There was a cohesiveness. Uh, we, we were disconnected at one of those junctures at one time or another when we were struggling running the football. It wasn't just the five guys up front. It was something else that was going on. Maybe it was an offensive lineman one time, and then the next we didn't push crack with a receiver, and the other time we didn't get an up cut with, with an outside zone play, or the tight end boxed off the end instead of stretching them. We got, we got the connection of all of those guys um, in, in unison this, this past weekend because we've been spending so much more time on it in practice. So we'll continue to do that um, because it's, it's beginning to pay off. And we need that running game um, for us to continue to have the balance we need on offense. And Coach, over here. So uh, I know you've had a great relationship with uh, Mike Elko. Uh, he was your defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. And just uh, hiring him in the first place and what really impressed you about Mike Elko when you made the hire back at Notre Dame and just talk about your relationship with Mike and uh, what makes this defense so tough to defend. Well, it's, it starts – look, it's like anything else, right? We just talked about Blake Baker, right, and his ability to relate. You know, Mike does a great job with the players. Um, he's demanding uh, but never demeaning. Uh, he uh, has a standard uh, of, of what he expects uh, but has always been able to build great relationships with, with his players. And so when you have that standard and 
Um, he's, he's a very bright mind when it comes to uh, defensive and defensive structures. He's got layers to everything relative to how to play defense. Um, you know, he's seen every coverage, knows every defensive front. So you've got a guy that has great experience. And he's, and he's done it at, uh, you know, a, a lot of different levels, right? And um, I've always respected those coaches because that's where I've come from. You know, you know I started as a Division II head coach. He's worked his way up. And, um, you know, anytime you can hire an Ivy League grad, you know, that uh, makes me smarter. So that worked out well for me. Yeah, Brian, your special teams the last couple of years just gotten better and better. Aaron Burrell is just absolutely automatic as a kickoff guy. Talk about just his development from day one. Yeah, he's, he's a, a weapon, obviously, because you, you almost don't even have to worry about kickoff return, um, which, you know, clearly we struggled with. I mean, we struggled with, you know, covering kicks. Um, but... You know, here's a guy that had a fractured kneecap um, and rehabbed all summer, um, put himself in a position where, you know, he could kick in the opener. Um, it wasn't 100%, and, and he's clearly gotten better and better and better as the year has gone on to where he's automatic, as you mentioned. Um, he's got a great demeanor. He works hard every day. And... Uh, you know, Damian Ramos is kicking so well, but his leg is, you know, he, he, as I mentioned before, he's, you know, he's going to have to work on some of the accuracy at times, but, you know, he's kicking them from 60-plus in practice, and um, he's going to be a great weapon for us as a field goal kicker as well. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about Ramos and his progression. His first year, I don't think he had a ton of attempts. No. And uh, he made the one at Florida, but yep. he, didn't, he didn't have a, a ton of them. And um, just his aspect of the way he's, you know, a, a kicker maybe is not at the top of the list sometimes when you talk about the most valuable players. And the Ole Miss kick, that wasn't his fault, right? The one. No, the, the Ole Miss was not. It, it was snapped uh, prior to him being ready for the kick. And so he rushed it and, and, and missed it to the right. Um, he has – his mechanics and his routine – is is so flawless in, in terms of what he does. I mean, his ability to repeat his uh, mechanics uh, really separates him. And all day he's working on it. And when we're out of practice, uh, his work ethic, uh, he's with his, his group every day. Um, he stays locked in for, for 90 minutes out there just working his routine. And so when it's time to kick, uh, it's, it's push play. <laughs> And, and go. It's, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Just curious, follow up on the passing game uh, comments from earlier. If you could go maybe a little bit deeper on the philosophy there. Is the payoff from maybe completing about around 60% that because you're working through more of a progression, maybe there's a, maybe a bigger plays available? Downfield? Yeah, I mean, you, you, can, you can see that the distribution of where the ball goes, it's much more difficult to defend because you don't know where the ball's going. It could go to Aaron Anderson. It could go to Lacey. It could go um, to Mason Taylor. You know, it could go to CJ. We're able to move the ball all over the field, and it makes it much more difficult for you to roll coverages, isolate particular players, and so you need a full field progression. And when you're in a full field progression, um, you know, there's a little bit more there relative to opportunities. With that, um, you're not getting some of the, the cupcake throws uh, that keep the chains moving in, in some other offenses. So percentages tend to dip a little bit because of that. But we feel like that is a, a better fit for Garrett in terms of what he does, and, and it's worked pretty good for our offense. Those uh, cupcake throws that you just brought up, I just think about third down and you know your ability to really convert those, especially yeah. with the receivers. Is that something that you kind of feel like you can utilize some of those you know, whole field looks early in downs and then kind of have something? You're yeah, you, you, you need spacing routes. You need routes that – um, you know, allow you the opportunity to, um, 
you know, focus on particular players when you're trying to move the chain, certainly. You saw uh, late in the game where, you know, we, we, we cracked a, a, a defender to get the ball to Mason uh, Taylor, you know, to pick up a first down late uh, in the game. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. There, there are manufactured throws that are higher percentage uh, to keep the chains moving. Uh, and then there are, which are high percentage, obviously, because you want to keep the chains moving when they're short three to five yards. But, you know, first down, second down, P and 10, you know, you're, we're much more in a progression read. Brian, I think Trey Dez was on the field for maybe roughly half of the offensive snaps. Yeah, 42 snaps. Um, I guess a two-parter. What did you make of just his overall uh, performance? And, and two, when you guys watched the film, did you notice any uh, effect that he may have had on maybe what Arkansas was trying to do defensively, you know, per his size and the kind yeah. of what he brings to that way? Yeah, no, I thought, uh, I thought for uh, – you know, his first game where he was in a lot of plays because he was averaging about six plays uh, prior to that, um, he, he fared very well. Um, there's some things we've got to work on outside the numbers in terms of releases and such, but inside uh, the numbers, hash, um, he's a difficult target. I mean, he's hard uh, to, to handle inside. Um, he blocked well for us, uh, blocked on the perimeter. Um, he was assignment correct for the most part. Um, so I thought it was, a, it was a really good start for his emergence within uh, what we want to be able to do moving forward. Thank you.